Annette Evans here, back on the On Her Own pepper spray journey. Last time we talked about why you should choose pepper spray. Today we're gonna to talk about pepper spray best practices. The first thing you need to do is check local law. There may be limitations on what kind of pepper spray that you can buy, how much pepper spray you can carry. So you wanna see what you can do in your area. It's probably legal, but you'll have to check. But once you've determined that, you'll need to select an actual product. There's two things that you want to look at. One is something called major capsaicinoid content. That's a lab tested percentage of how much of the active ingredient, the stuff that makes pepper spray work, is in the product. You're looking for something to between 0.7 and 2%. Palm, who's the official pepper spray partner of On Her Own, produces a product with 1.4% major capsaicinoid content but amounts such as, as low as 0.33% can be effective, just not quite as effective. You might have heard of something called the Scoville heat units or SHUs, and some pepper spray products are going to be based on that. It's a taste test. There's not really a lab calibrated standard for what that is, so it's not really something you re want to rely on, just like you don't really want to rely on, well, there's 10% peppers in our product. Well, what do the lab results say? What do the lab results say about MCCs, or major capsaicinoid content? The next thing you want to look at is how does the pepper spray come out of the canister? There's a couple of major formulations or patterns that you'll see. One is stream, and that's just like the garden hose. It's going to come out in a single stream from the canister. It's going to go the furthest of any of the options. It's going to be the most directly targeted of any of the options, and it's going to be the least affected by wind. It's what I prefer. It's what's used in Palm. The other thing you'll see sometimes is a cone spray. It's more of a fan shaped. It's easier to hit somebody with, but you're gonna see more overspray. You're gonna see more cross contamination. Some people are worried about that. They don't want people getting pepper sprayed who shouldn't be pepper sprayed. In fact, they might go to something called a gel or a foam product. And gels and foams are really, really attractive because there's no overspray potential on them for the most part because they kind of stick to the person that they're sprayed at. It sounds like a good idea, but it's not really something that you need to worry about a lot for normal everyday person use, personal usage. And there's a big problem with most gels and foams on the market. They could take 30 to 45 seconds to take full effect, and that's a really, really long time in a fight, not time that we have to wait when we're trying to protect ourselves. Now, once you've bought pepper spray, there's a couple of things you'll need to keep in mind. One of them is because pepper spray is in a pressurized canister, you have to store them in temperature-stable environments. That means you can't just toss one in your car and leave it there all summer long. They will explode, and the last thing you want when you open the car door is a face full of pepper. The other thing, because those, those canisters are pressurized, is you have to keep track of the expiration dates that are printed on the canisters. It's not just a ploy to sell you more product. The propellants that are inside the canister that make this, the contents actually come out can leak out a little bit over time. It's not gonna be something that's gonna make it smell peppery, but it is something that means that when you try to use it for real, it could just do this instead. That's no good. Now, the other thing you want to do when you're using pepper spray is the, the major capsaicinoid content, the things that make it hot, can settle out over time. Now, this is a lot more rare in modern canisters, modern containers, but it's easy to fix. You just need to shake the canister on a regular basis or before you use it. Can't hurt, might help, might as well make a habit out of it. Now, once you actually go to use the pepper spray, there's a right way and a wrong way. The right way is pretty simple. You're going to spray somebody across the eyes. As one of my instructors likes to put it, you're going to go ear to ear. You're going to see a red-orange color go across their eyes. If they're wearing glasses, you want to go right over their glasses so it drips down. And you want to limit that spray to approximately one second. And that's because as a liquid, you don't want to use your pepper spray to wash the pepper spray out of somebody's eyes. That's a waste of product that you might need again in that interaction for that person or somebody else. Now, how do you make sure you know how to use that pepper spray properly? Don't take your live pepper spray and spray one of your friends and see how it works. That's why I've included an inert trainer unit 
in the on her own signature package. That's why you can get trainer units from other manufacturers and other sources. They use water and propellant in the exact same containers what you carry. So you can see how far does the spray go? What pattern does it have? And how do you learn how to target it? You know, using your thumb on the button and using something like the flip top lid on the palm as a sight, you know, just move that flip top across somebody's eyes. Now, you can use a target for that, or what you can do is grab a friend, friend, put on a pair of sunglasses or safety glasses and spray each other, making sure you're using the inner unit and not the live unit. Now, remember, the acute effects of pepper spray will only last for about five or 10 minutes, even though they might be miserable for quite a bit longer. That means as soon as you use pepper spray for real, you're gonna need to end that interaction quickly, whatever that takes. It may just be running away. That's a great idea whenever you can do it. You'll also wanna call the police quickly. Pepper spray is a use of force and you'll wanna make sure that you have that interaction on record just in case anything goes wrong. Now, once you've used pepper spray, the other thing you wanna do is go grab a new pepper spray. While you can get more than one use and more than one interaction out of a canister of pepper spray, you don't know exactly how much you've used and you can't predict how much you'll need to use in the future. They're low cost units, so go get another one. Don't risk your safety on saving a few bucks on using your pepper spray again in the future.